Good morning. Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more control in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recovery from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal, and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, or or prescription drugs, we welcome your phone calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the Longevity products, Longevity business, Longevity formulation, something you may have heard about, read about, or if you just have a comment or success story you'd like to share, we love hearing from you. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, head over to brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase your longevity products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites as well for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a business. If you're an entrepreneur or you like the entrepreneur lifestyle, you can work out of the home. You can make your own hours. You can be your own boss and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. If this sounds good to you, please head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com. Dot com or criticalhealthnews.com and sign up right off our websites. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. They can give you all the details and you can also order products at 866-735-2470. Also want to tell you about our Truth Skin Health products, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Truth Retinol 5% Gel. If you're dealing with aging skin or want to prevent skin aging, if you want to reverse wrinkles, if you have acne or acne blemishes, or if you're looking for a good skin lightening product and you don't want to deal with toxic prescription drugs like hydroquinone, Retinol is an awesome skin lightener. Retinol is also great for anti-aging. It also helps with blemished skin. And our Truth Retinol 5% Gel is not only made with the highest concentration of retinol that you're going to find anywhere. It's not only made with the highest concentration of retinol, but it's also got a huge dose of premium fat-soluble vitamin C, as well as never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, surfactants, emulsifiers, water, silicon, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products, including our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. You can find them all at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. We are clearing up the mythology and the misunderstandings and the bad information about heart disease, the leading cause of death in this country and around the world. The heart, which is basically a type of muscle, it's largely made up of muscle cells, does more physical work over the course of a lifetime than any other muscle in the body. And it's not just a muscular tissue, it's also a highly electrical tissue. And the heart can actually even work and beat outside the body. As long as it has a supply of oxygen, you can take your heart out of the body and it's going to still facilitate, it's still going to uh, still generate an electrical charge. The heart, which starts to beat maybe three or four weeks, probably about four weeks after conception, is arguably along with the brain, which, by the way, it has a lot in common with, 
the heart is probably the most amazing structure in the body, along with the brain. The heart and the brain are the two most amazing structures in the body. Aside from the fact that the heart is really very tiny, it's probably about the size of a fist, and its valves are probably the size of maybe a quarter or a half a dollar, the heart, is, despite this tiny size, is capable of beating billions of times in a lifetime. For most people, for many people, without any issues. The heart can help push or pump five quarts of blood through 60,000 miles of blood vessels. Now, recently, it's been uh, some, some uh, visionary healthcare professionals, visionary physicians, have come to the conclusion that the heart is actually not a pump. That's kind of interesting. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. But nonetheless, the heart's beating is at least somewhat involved or some, somehow involved with the pushing through of five quarts of blood through 60,000 miles of blood vessels, which is the equivalent of 2,000 gallons every day and a million barrels of blood through a lifetime. The blood is actually a type of tissue. It's a type of connective tissue. And the fact that the blood is a connective tissue and the fact that the heart sits on a skeleton of connective tissue or framework of connective tissue and the fact that the heart is covered with a bag of connective tissue called the pericardium, that means that all the strategies that are involved in building joints and building cartilage and keeping your bones strong, keeping your skin wrinkle-free and healthy, all of these strategies apply to keeping your heart healthy. And this is so important because no cardiologist ever mentions this. No cardiologist ever tells you that glucosamine is going to be good for your heart. No cardiologist tells you that glucosamine is more important for your heart than cholesterol-lowering drugs. If you have blood problems or heart problems, you have clots and embolisms, anemias, or if you're dealing with some kind of disease of the heart tissue, and that includes arrhythmias, fibrillations, building up the strength of the heart, building up the strength of the blood, like you would build the joints up if you were an arthritic, is way more important than any kind of medication that you're going to get from the doctor. When was the last time your heart doctor told you this? Keeping your blood tissue and the heart tissue itself uh, vitally, uh, vital and robust and resilient and healthy with essential fatty acids and vitamin C and hyaluronic acid and zinc and glucosamine and collagen supplements and bone soup and aloe vera and Fucoid Z is way, way more heart health relevant than anything your doctor or your pharmacist can do for you, at least in terms of chronic long-term conditions. Certainly, certainly uh, nutritional supplementation for building up the connective tissue of the heart and the, and, the, uh, and the blood is way more important than worrying about your cholesterol numbers. How silly that is. How nonsensical, how medically stupid that is to worry about your LDL and your HDL when we're not paying attention uh, to the connective tissue itself, to the tissue of the heart itself to the tissue called the blood itself, to the tissue of the, of the blood vessels, the circulatory vessels themselves. Now, if you've had a surgical procedure, you may need a blood thinner temporarily. I'm not saying there's not a role temporarily in the short term for prescription drugs. If you had a surgical procedure, you need a blood thinner because after you've been cut open, after you've had an operation, your blood's going to clot because the body doesn't know it's had an operation. It thinks it's been eaten by a tiger. So one of its survival mechanisms, its evolutionary survival mechanisms upon wounding is to clot and a blood thinner may be important temporarily. But to stay on a blood thinner long term without addressing nutritional status is a classic example of medical silliness, stupidity, misunderstanding about how the body works, about how the heart works, about how the circulatory system works. And this misunderstanding about the heart and about the blood cannot be overstated because of all of the people that are suffering from heart disease. One out of two people is going to have a heart, a heart health issue sometime during their lifetime, and that's despite billions of dollars spent by organizations like the American College of Cardiology and the American Heart Association that supposedly promote healthy heart practices. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. That's 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, 844-236-6010. We'll take a commercial break and come back on the bright side right after this. We are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 
to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, and 24-7 on our archive pages, brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Got search engines up at both pages. You can review programs, or you can... uh, Direct customers, clients, friends, loved ones to various programs searching by subject matter at benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that up. And also uh, brightsideben.com. You can purchase longevity products at brightsideben.com. Also at pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team. If you like the entrepreneurial lifestyle of nutrition, nutritional supplementation and dietary changes have helped you in your personal life and you want to help spread the word and make some money at the same time. You want to know about the longevity business opportunity for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business. You can also get your products at the wholesale price. You can enjoy all the tax benefits associated with having your own business. Call 866-735-2470. Tell them you want to join the Brightside Ben team or you can sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com also if you're looking for some high-end premium super uber effective topical skincare you don't want to deal with preservatives or fragrances or fillers or waxes and you don't want to pay for 95 or 98 percent water which is what most skin care products are if you want skincare products that are really treatments health treatments not just superficial rub on the rub stuff on your skin oh that feels nice kind of products if you really want to make a difference in your skin topically you need to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com, Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Omega 6 Healing Cream, Truth Transdermal C Balm, and our Truth Transdermal C Serum voted one of the top 150 products in the world by Harper's Bazaar Magazine. Check it out at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, got lines open at 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls here in our next segment, as we always do on the Bright Side. We're talking about heart disease, or just the nonsense that spews out of the mouth of heart health professionals. It just blows me away. Do, does, it, does the American Heart Association realize that the heart disease epidemic has occurred under their watch, this billion-dollar operation, this billion-dollar foundation, or at least three-quarters of a billion dollars in revenue that is generated by the American Heart Association? The CEO of the American Heart Association makes over a million dollars a year. This is big business, folks. And guess what? If we figured out heart disease, there would be no more heart, uh, American Heart Association. If we really figured out heart disease, this CEO that makes a million dollars a year is going to have to find a new job. If we really figured out heart disease, if we really got to the cause of heart disease, if nobody had heart disease, there would be no more billion-dollar foundations. Can you see what's happening here? Nobody's interested in uh, uh, taking care of our bodies or our hearts. Foundations don't care. It's not in their interest to get us better, but it's in our interest, which is why the kind of information that we're talking about here is so darn important. Cholesterol? Are you kidding me? Anybody who even understands a tiny bit about biochemistry understands the nonsense, the stupidity of this cholesterol hypothesis. And I don't want to beat a dead horse here because we've been talking about the subject for the last couple of weeks, and I've been talking about it in my presentations for years, but still we got of some 40 million Americans or I don't know, maybe 30 million Americans taking these statin drugs and being stuck on them for a lifetime. So let's just leave it at this, okay? There is very little, if any, relationship between the production of cholesterol in the liver and heart disease, and you cannot statin your way back to heart health. You cannot take statin drugs and expect your heart to be healthy. And any medical professional who tells you that should be ashamed of themselves, period. If you're on a statin drug supposedly to protect your heart and you're not addressing the real causes of heart disease, which by the way, no surprise, are exactly the same as the causes of any disease, you are wasting your time, you're wasting your money, you're poisoning yourself needlessly, and you're not addressing the real problem. And another, by the way, classic example of the nonsense and the bad information spewing from the mouths of the American Heart Association, the mouth of the American Heart Association. I don't want to blame people, by the way. I don't want to blame individuals here. It's the paradigm, and it's the model. Another classic example of the stupidity of this model is the nonsense about coconut oil and other saturated fats in the diet. Now, trans fats and processed fats, they can definitely be an issue. Cooked fats, heated fats, those are a problem. But the idea that coconut oil and butter and saturated fats 
which contain major heart healthy nutrients, vitamin K, vitamin E, selenium, iodine, fatty acids like butyric acid, MCTs, medium chain triglycerides, which are in coconut oil. These things are incredibly important for heart health, especially vitamin K. And nature, one of nature's best sources of vitamin K is butter. You want more stupidity? How about blood thinners? Blood thinners that force and compel the blood into thinning. Nothing says dumb medical strategy more clearly than keeping a patient on a blood thinning drug long term and telling them not to eat broccoli. That's what they tell you when you're on your blood thinner. Don't eat green leafy vegetables because they contain vitamin K. It may counteract your poison. Plavix, Eliquis, Warfarin, these drugs that force and compel your blood into thinning, that tell your body, we're smarter than you, body. We're going to make you thin. Blood clotting is a major sign of a body in distress. It's not a sign that you need a poison. It's a sign that you got to calm the body down. If you're on a blood thinner and you're not addressing blood sugar, not addressing insulin, not addressing dysbiosis, i.e. messed up gut bacteria, not addressing the gallbladder, the liver, digestive toxicities, and most especially cortisol and a jacked up stress system, which are the real underlying causes of all disease, including heart disease, you are totally, totally missing the boat. And by the way, speaking of cortisol and speaking of stress, there is a very important and very under-recognized, under-recognized and underappreciated relationship between our emotional nature and the heart. This is not airy-fairy. This is hardcore physiology. According to HeartMath Institute Research Director, and by the way, HeartMath, if you have any kind of heart health problems, get a book called The HeartMath Solution or Google HeartMath. This is an amazing organization that studies the link between the emotional life and the heart. According to Dr. Roland, and they do it with hardcore science, by the way. According to um, HeartMath Institute Research Director, Dr. Roland McCready, quote, the heart is a key component of the emotional system, thus providing a physiological basis for the long-acknowledged link between the heart and our emotional life, unquote. Dr. McCready goes on to say, quote, the importance of gaining a deeper understanding of the emotional system has been increasingly recognized as an important scientific undertaking as it has become clear that emotions underlie the majority of the stress we experience, influence our decisions, provide, provide motivation for our actions, and create the textures that determine our quality of life and the heart is a point of entry into the psychophysiological network that underlies our emotional experience, unquote. That means the heart is a key player in our emotions, and our emotions is a, are, a key, are key players in whether or not we are healthy. According to Dr. McCready, changes in heart rhythm patterns can actually be read or assessed to determine what kind of emotions we're feeling. You can look at the heart rhythm and see if we're angry. You can look at the heart rhythm and see if we're loving. You can look at the heart rhythm and see if we're forgiving or kind. What do you think that says about fibrillations? What do you think that says about arrhythmias? It talks about the link between these two. Fibrillations, arrhythmias, heart disease, and emotions in general. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. We are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you if you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today. If you're on statin drugs or blood thinning drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your medication, we can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have a comment or success story, we also love hearing those. Love hearing success stories especially. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side, and we'll get your calls here in just a sec. From the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, fasting blood sugar and fasting insulin identified as new biomarkers for weight loss. <laughs> Not new. We've been talking about this for years. Blood sugar and blood insulin levels are the key markers when it comes to weight loss, when it comes to heart health, when it comes to autoimmune disease, when it comes to health challenges in general, when it comes to aging in general. It's about blood sugar and insulin largely, especially when it comes to hypertension and heart disease. Keep your blood sugar stable 
keep your insulin low. How do you do that? By laying off foods that spike your blood sugar and spike insulin. That is fast-burning carbohydrates. In fact, folks, the less we eat, the longer we live. The less we eat, the better off our heart and all of our organs are going to be. Every time we eat anything, an entire biochemical cascade is initiated to prepare the body for that food. The immune system is activated, the inflammatory system is activated, the digestive system is activated, and all of this requires resources. As soon as food enters into our mouth, nutritional resources are mobilized to process and digest that food. And so the question becomes, do we want to expend our precious zinc and our precious vitamin C and our vitamin E and essential fats, which for many of us are in, are in short supply, do we want to expend these precious resources digesting our food or do we want to spend these precious resources on growing, on building, on repairing, on fighting diseases, on anti-aging? It's pretty obvious. Now, I'm not saying we don't eat. I'm just saying eat a lot less. You know what? If you're really, 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 really hungry, check this out. Do this experiment. Wait until you're really, really hungry. Don't eat for a day or half a day. Wait until your stomach growls. For most of us, that never occurs. For most of us, we never really, really get hungry because we eat so much. But wait for half a day or a day till you get really, really hungry. And then when you're really hungry, put some food in front of you and have two bites or one bite or three bites. And notice that after one or two or three bites, you're not hungry anymore. What that says is that's all the food you needed. We are shut off switch. The shutoff switch to turning off our appetite gets turned on within two or three or four bites. But most of us eat 100 bites or 50 bites. We're eating 10 times as much as we need to to satisfy our hunger. We eat for social reasons. I'm, I'm not beating anybody up on this because I do it myself. I notice it myself. I eat because I'm bored or I eat because I'm in a social situation or I eat from my, from my mouth. For, I eat to satisfy the little postage size stamped air, uh, postage stamp size area on the top of my tongue where my taste buds are. But if we're really serious about our health, and especially if we're sick, that's when we really get serious. God forbid if somebody die, we get diagnosed with cancer or with, a heart, or with heart disease, that's when we get, for many of us, that's when we get serious. And if we're really serious about our health, we've got to focus and pay attention to our blood sugar, to our insulin, to our appetite, how we eat. These, are, these things are so much more important than drugs. There's so much more important than anything a doctor can do for us. This idea that we can be doctored back to health without paying attention to things like how we eat and our blood sugar levels and our insulin and our breathing and our exercise and how we think and how we feel, you can, uh, you can blame that for our, the disastrous condition of our health, the fact that one out of four Americans is dealing with a chronic long-term degenerative disease despite the fact that the body is always a healing and regenerating system. All right, from the Washington Post, diet drinks are associated with weight gain. How can that be? How can a diet drink be associated with weight gain? Well, it turns out that just the sweet flavor, whether it comes from aspartame or sucralose or honey or sugar or NutraSweet or whatever, just the sweet flavor will activate this insulin response. And insulin is a weight gain hormone. Insulin is not just a weight gain hormone, it's a growth substance. It makes cells divide rapidly. It helps feed cells. It's also a fat hormone. Again, underscoring or underlying the incredible importance to watching out, keeping your insulin, uh, paying attention to your insulin levels and your blood sugar levels when it comes to health, when it comes to weight issues, etc. All right. From dermatology, last, this is the last one, then we'll get your phone calls at 844-236-6010. From Dermatology News, study finds chocolate intake increases acne risk. I love this one because for years, this is from the Journal of the European Academy of Dermatology and Venerology, Venerology, Venereology, and this was uh, published in Dermatology News in a couple weeks ago, July 21st. Study finds chocolate intake increases acne risk. Uh, and the reason this is important is because for years, dermatologists would laugh and make fun of people who said that, oh, uh, chocolate may be related to your lousy skin. Dermatologists would say, oh, that's just silly. That's just an old wise tale. No, it's not. Of course, what you eat affects your skin. Now, I'm not saying chocolate is going to make everybody break out. I'm not even saying chocolate is necessarily a breakout food. But the fact of the matter is, 
is if we eat food that has lots of sugar in it, we will jack up our insulin, we will jack up our cortisol, where our skin will be more oily, our, skin, our cells will divide more rapidly, we'll produce the wrong kinds of hormones, and yes, indeed, acne can result. If you're dealing with acne blemishes, please, please, please do not underestimate the relationship between acne, between the formation of blemishes, and digestive health. Make sure you're using probiotics, good bacteria. Make sure you're using fatty nutrients like vitamin A and vitamin E, both of which are a little bit difficult for the body to process, especially if you have gallbladder problems or liver problems. And if everybody on acne needs to be on 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate, 20,000 IU of vitamin A, or even better, just get my blemish repair complex, which is packed with acne fighting nutrients as well as liver liver health nutrients like N-acetylcysteine and selenium you could find our blemish repair complex at truthtreatments.com truthtreatments.com all right 844-236-6010 is our number time to hit the phones let us go to Elaine our friend Elaine in Alaska good morning Elaine hey good morning how are you doing sir I'm doing good nice to talk to you what's going on today you too. Yeah, I, um, I've got a patient I wanted to kind of pick your brain sure. with. A very, very sweet little girl. She is um, 12 years old, and oh, no. a year ago she fell down some stairs. She kind of tumbled down the stairs and okay. was complaining of hip pain, and they just kind of, oh, it's probably just growing pains. And then they, after a few weeks, went to get x-rays and found that the the femoral head, the hip joint, like, you know, popped out of socket. So she had an emergency surgery and then a second surgery and then a third surgery to take all that hardware out. They pinned everything. Wow. This is terrible. Uh, and this she, all came from a fall? Yeah. She, she must have some other health things going on. She can't be completely healthy. Does she have yeah. anything else happen? Anything else going on? Um, well, she came to me a couple weeks ago. Um, Mom brought her in on crutches. She's been on crutches or a wheelchair for. Elaine? So, I music. I th- yeah, I think we lost. Uh, I lost you there for a second. Yeah, we got to take a break. Can you hang on? We got to. We'll take a commercial and then we'll finish up and come back. All right. If you're on hold, we'll get to you when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. On the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Elaine in Alaska. Elaine, you there? Hi. Yes. Hi, Elaine. Yeah, so the little girl fell, and she's not healing somehow, correct? Right. Yeah. Well, she's got to have something else going on. Little kids heal really fast. So what else is happening? She has, I mean, when I tested her joint, she has pretty severe hypermobility. That, like her joints are very loosey goosey. Okay. Uh, so, and then I know she's got some gut issues. That's uh, where you're, you know what, Elaine, you know as well as I do. It always goes back to the gut. She's not okay. healing correctly. If she's got this hyper, this loosey goosey hypermobility, that means the cartilage is not healing correctly. She may have some kind of necrotic condition going on. Whatever it is, uh, the fact of the matter is, is that there's something else. There's something behind the, um, uh, the symptoms, the, the obvious health issues, and that's where you got to go. You can't treat the uh, obvious health issues without going to the root cause. That's, that's always going to be the case. The bones are not the root cause. The lack of healing is not the root cause of the problem. The root cause of the problem, more than likely, if you have a 12-year-old kid, is going to be in the digestive system. Does she have a, a history of food allergies or food intolerances, constipation, et cetera, that, or do you know? Yeah, talking with mom, um, she did have some issues with dairy, and, you know, I, I tr- I'm I trying very hard to explain the importance of, you know, this building, this internal building, kind of using the analogy of Legos. It's like, if, and I'm telling her, if you don't have the certain Lego, right. you can't build what you want to build. So, Is she on uh, steroids, by the way? Did they give her prednisone? No, no drugs. Okay, well, that's good. Oh, she's not on any drug. That's good. Focus on the digestive system. Use glucosamine, cartilage products, collagen, 
in conjunction with focusing on the digestive system because if you're not using, uh, if you're not working on absorption, it doesn't matter what you take. Chicken soup, aloe vera, fucoid Z, nightly essence, essential fats, calcium, magnesium, zinc, your minerals, selenium, vitamin A, all of these are critically important. If she's a sugar eater, that's going to mess things up. She probably is. Most kids are. So if she's a sugar eater, please tell mom about the relationship between sugar and nutrient deficiency, between sugar and inflammation, between sugar and a messed up uh, a dysbiosis or messed up gut bacteria. The, as best as you can wean her off or keep her off of fast burning sugars, more protein, get her on the bone broth protein. You've got a zillion ways that you can deal with this thing. But if you're, if there's any underlying absorption or digestive issues, it's going to be much tougher. Yeah. All right. Does that help okay. you? Oh, don't Thanks. forget vitamin C. You cannot, we, yeah. I forget it sometimes myself. You cannot build connective tissue without vitamin C, period. Vitamin C is the rate limiting step in the generation of connective tissue. That's for folks dealing with, with uh, joint problems, cartilage problems, osteoporosis, wrinkles, which are largely a connective tissue problem, heart disease. You cannot make connective tissue without vitamin C. All right. Thank you for your call, Elaine. Appreciate it. Have a beautiful day. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right. Let's go to Rosie in Tennessee. Good morning, Rosie. Welcome to the Bright Side. Good morning. I've spoke to you several times, and uh, finally they discover the symptoms that I have is caused by a Huckam hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. Okay. It's a long word, but that means I your heart is enlarged. Your heart's been yeah, working I too have hard. To have surgery on the 15. What are they but doing? What are they, they going to do I've for you? Done, I've done selenium. I've done uh, vitamin C and all that, and bone soup, and I've talked to you before. Now I need to know what do I have to prepare for the surgery and good question. after the surgery. Good questions. Good questions. What are they doing to your heart, first of all? They're going to shave the thickness and <laughs> correct the leaky valve. Okay, well, guess what? If you still have the underlying cause of, of your enlarged heart, that is your heart's working really hard, that is your blood is thick and sludgy, it's not going to help you. Your heart's going to enlarge again. So they're going to shave your heart. Well, I have to lose 30 pounds. Okay, well, that's another thing. Every pound of fat creates miles of blood vessels. So the more fat you're carrying, the more blood vessels, the more heart, uh, your heart has to pump the more work your heart has to do to push that blood through, your, through the vessels. So you gotta work on your circulation, my dear. And by the way, we're gonna talk tomorrow or probably the next day about the mythology of the heart as a pump. Nonetheless, when, you got more, when you're carrying more body fat, your heart is gonna have to work harder. So here's what you need to do. You need to clean up the blood. Most importantly, that involves digestive health because if the digestive system is messed up, leaky gut specifically, toxicity is going to get into the bloodstream and that's going to cause your blood to become thick and sludgy and it's going to make things harder in the heart. So you've got to clean okay. up the blood working on the diet. Let, let me just finish this real quick and I'll tell you some supplements that you can take for, for your heart surgery. Work on the blood. Secondly, work on the blood sugar because once the sugar, once blood sugar becomes elevated, damage occurs to the blood vessels and this also uh, impedes the circulatory, the, the flow of blood through the circulatory system. So work on your blood sugar. Now, as far as your, and then oh, don't forget the cortisol issue, the stress issue, triangle of disease, always triangle of disease, digestion, blood sugar, and cortisol. Now, as far as your, um, as far as your surgical procedure goes, make sure and, and tell your doctor you're doing this and don't let him tell you, you know, disagree with you because it's your body, but just tell him what you're doing. Vitamin K, vitamin E, digestive enzymes. I'd be doing vitamin C multiple times a day multiple times a day. By the way, when I say digestive enzymes, I'm talking on an empty stomach. Digestive enzymes. Uh, make sure that you're you using your, be your Beyond Tangy Tangerine all day long. Make sure you're using yeah. your ultimate EFAs, nine capsules a day. Stay on the selenium. Uh, yeah. Focus on connective tissue building. Remember, the heart is, sits on a framework of connective tissue. So in many ways, heart disease is connective tissue disease. That means use glucosamine, your glucogel caps. Maybe tr uh, you, you might want to find some organic gelatin and do that on a daily basis, gelatin being basically being connective tissue. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I bought the EFA, and the third day I took it, my nose started bleeding uh, because you were saying that uh, they put you on a blood thinner after the surgery. Yeah. Are you? Uh, do I have to go back on the EFA, or I should avoid for life? Making you want EFAs for life? I got anemic by losing blood from hemorrhoid tissue, which I had to have surgery. 
and cut them out a couple of years ago. You, well, well, hang on, hang on. A very anemic, and they Rosie, Rosie, sweethearts. Intravenous. Uh, Rosie, uh, Rosie, Rosie, stop. Yeah. Why is your blood? Are you on a blood thinner now? No, I am not. He cannot give me any aspirin or anything because my nose bleed. Why is your blood thin? Did he, they tell you why your blood is thinning, or why your blood is thin? No. I, it sounds to me it's like just, you've got a blood vessel issue. You've got leaky blood vessels more than you have a, a thinning blood. It sounds to me like you have a circulatory issue and glucosamine and connective tissue building supplements, bone soup will help with that. Everything I'm telling you is going to strengthen your blood vessels, including okay. essential fatty acids. Okay? okay? Don't let anybody tell you that your nosebleeds are coming from supplements. It's not true. No, I, I, I saw that. Like he, he, the, my physician... Um, fix that no okay okay so stay on the efas and you want and, uh, efas yeah, before and, and after and lately i discovered i have sleep apnea because of my heart not pumping no oh, you have sleep just... apnea because your blood sugar is messed up and you have blood, uh, sleep apnea because your blood is sludgy and it's not circulating you have sleep apnea is because going to affect the surgery no, it's going to make it better, and it's going to improve your surgery, everything I just told you. It's going to improve the prognosis, but your problem is in the blood, not the heart. Let me say that again, okay. Rosie. Tell this to your doctor. It's in the blood, yeah. Not the heart. If I correct the 30 pounds, if I lose the 30 yes. do they lose them right away? When I told him it's no good to lose them fast, and he said, well, it will help the heart. It will so, definitely help it your won't circulation. the problem. No, the problem is in the blood. You've got dirty, sludgy blood. It's not getting oxygenated. It's not delivering oxygen correctly. And that's causing the sleep apnea. But that doesn't matter. I mean, that, that's the mechanism. The problem is the sludgy blood caused by the sugar and by the digestion and probably exacerbated by stress. I call that the triangle of disease. The blood sugar, uh, the digestive system, the blood sugar system, and then the adrenal thyroid. That's the cortisol, the stress. So what do Those I do before or after? The everything I just told you, Rosie. Go back yeah. to the archive. Go to BenFuchsArchives.com and, and check out the archives because I just told you. I, I emailed to... you, but you're too busy. I, I, I didn't know. You. Send me an email today. Okay. Rosie, okay. send it today with your phone number. Okay? Okay. But make sure you okay. send it today because I, I get tons of emails. Thank you, Rosie. Thank God you. bless you. Good luck with everything. All right. Uh, Robin, last word for you. What's going on, my dear? Uh, you were talking about hang along yesterday and yes. uh, the cortisol. And I know, I know you hate the words bioidentical hormones. Hate that. But is a woman who is depleted in all of her hormones and her cortisol level is ridiculous. How is she supposed to replace all this? I mean, I know. If you take a hormone and your body doesn't want the hormone, in other words, your body's not making enough hormones, you're going to be jacking up the system without the raw materials to handle that energy. And that's the problem with hormone therapy. And it's a very important subject, Rob. And I hope you'll call me tomorrow because this is an extremely important subject. In fact, maybe I'll even, if I remember to, I'll cover it tomorrow. If you take hormones and put hormones into a body that's not prepared for those, for those hormones nutritionally and mechanically and physiologically, and you jack up the system artificially, you're playing with fire and that's why estrogen is on the fda's known to cause cancer list all right i'm pharmacist ben thanks for listening friends have a wonderful beautiful awesome spectacular day we'll talk to y'all later bye for now